Assalamualaikum. Shobai ke shagoto janai. Amader ei program e. Amader program ta holo good practice of teaching online. Eja UK Bangladesh Education Trust e ekta initiative to arrange some kind of platform for the teachers. Jekhane prithi bhi bivinno pranto theke abong Bangladesh e bivinno school theke teacher rash ben. এবং টিচাররা এসে উনারা উনাদের গুড প্র্যাকটিসগুলো শেয়ার করবেন অন্যদের সাথে আমরা জানি পেন্ডেমিক সিচুয়েশনের মধ্যেও থ্রু আউট দা হোল কান্ট্রি इवन ইন দা ওয়ার্ল্ড টিচারস আর ট্রাইং টু সাপোর্ট देयर স্টুডেন্টস সো দিস ইজ প্রোগ্রাম ইজ अबाउट হাউ দে আর সাপোর্টিং উই উইল ট্রাই টু নো দা গুড প্র্যাকটিস সো আমাদের সাথে আজকে একজন গেস্ট আছেন আমি পরিচয় করিয়ে দিচ্ছি আমাদের আজকের গেস্টকে উনি হচ্ছেন মিসেস আসনাহা ফারহিন শি ইজ দ্য হেড অফ প্রাইমারি এন্ড পিওআইপি কোঅর্ডিনেটর আব্দুল কাদির মোল্লা ইন্টারন্যাশনাল স্কুল শি ইজ অলসো চেয়ার অফ আইবি পিওআইপিসি বাংলাদেশ নেটওয়ার্ক আসনাহা আই ওয়েলকাম ইউ টু आवर প্রোগ্রাম থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ সো মাচ মিস্টার আসাদ জামান সাহেব এন্ড আই আই এম রিয়েলি গ্ল্যাড টু বি হিয়ার on such a you know prestigious platform so viewers a uh, very warm welcome to the talk of today and i must appreciate the initiative taken by uk bangladesh educational trust so kudos to you mr asad zaman and thank yeah you. good to go thank you thank you very much asnaha you are welcome again so today uh, asnaha will mainly talk about the differentiated instruction we will know from her what is differentiated instruction what is the advantage of it how to implement this and uh, all these stuffs asnaha will start her presentation very soon just i'm explaining you how this program will uh, run today the format um, we will see the presentation from asnaha she will talk for 20 25 minutes then we will go for the question answer sessions during that question answer sessions you will see a link in our comment box you can join to this studio directly using that link or if you have any question you can post that in our comment box we will pass it to our guest speaker and end of the session we will have another 10 minutes for the question answer so this is this will be the format of today's program so now we are going directly to the main topic asnaha i welcome you with your presentation it is your time now thank you so much before starting it you know formally uh, getting into uh, the core things i would like to a little bit introduce myself and i would like to talk about the organization i'm working with so my name is asna farin i have been learning teaching to and fro for past 10 years and i consider myself a lifelong learner and basically i belong to india and uh, i moved to bangladesh last year uh same month month of june and uh, i have been working with abdul qadir mulla international school and we are an ib world school now and i would like to you know really thank mr abdul qadir mulla the chairman of the school for giving this community uh, an international platform to learn and grow and the directors of the school mr mahbubur rahman tariq and ms nasreena sultana dina and last but not the least my wonderful team so they are the one they are the change makers they have adapted something which is really difficult and they are going on well with that and all the parents and well wishers too so today uh, the talk is about differentiated instructions so here i go uh can you see my screen uh mr uh, sai my screen is visible uh yeah we can see your screen yeah that's good fine so uh, uh i think i don't have this opportunity to send a live comment so i request you to just pass it on if you can i have just shared a comment uh this is a link Can you see this, Mr. Sai? I've just shared on a private chat. Am I audible? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I have got yeah. the link. If you link. want me, do you want me to share this link in yes, the yes, others? Yes. 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 All right. Yes. Okay. 
Thank All you right. so much. You're welcome. Fine, guys. Before starting, I want you to little a uh, bit, you know, trouble your mind and think about what comes in your mind when you hear or see the word differentiated instructions. So when you see or hear the word differentiated instructions, so just tell me about the immediate thoughts that strike your mind and use the link that I have shared or Mr. Asad Zaman has shared in the live link. Use that link and I can see your result right here. Are you able to share, Mr. Asan? Yeah, I have shared it. That's great. So we'll be seeing the results right now. Uh, the moment they will uh, access it, we'll be seeing it. It is now there Hi. in the comment box. Anyone? And I am also sharing it on one page. Okay, that's great. So let's see how uh, are they sharing it. Okay, so in the meanwhile, they share it. I can go come back to this little later and I should start my main presentation. If they're having time to share, I should get back to my main presentation. Okay. No, it is not giving me an option to share the PPT. Let me try again. Mm, yeah, you, if you share, I will. I will take it there. Okay. Share screen. Your browser has blocked your screen. Click share a screen. Your address bar to show access. Fine. not happening uh, mm, you cannot can see it? it no we can see but previously we were uh, watching it okay fine so it now it is not happening because something is wrong so oh, it is, i think it is 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 coming can you please share it again okay let me try it yeah it has been blocked by my you know browser okay okay i think uh, maybe you can you can see the presentation and continue yes. talking yeah yes it will be fine so i'll i should do that uh, i can see it again mm -hmm. yes it's coming i tried to fix it can okay. you see it now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay it is there. So I think I should move on. So guys, yeah. today we are going to discuss about differentiated instruction. And I'm your host today, Ms. Asna Fareen, and we are good to go. I request you all to use the chat box so that I'm not, you know, busy doing monologue. We are doing a dialogue today. And the dialogue is about differentiated instruction. So you can see, you know, a, a statement written on the screen, fair is not equal. Right. So what the statement says, uh, what do you think about the statement? Please use the check box and tell me what do you think about the statement when I say fear is not equal. I request Mr. Asad, just share the chats what is coming up in this uh, because you can see it. If you can do that, it would be really great for me. I, yeah, I can get to yeah. know, you know, what is their understanding? Mm -hmm. Fair is not equal. What do you think about this statement? Please share your immediate thoughts in the chat box. Okay, when it, when some, uh, something appear, I will share that with you. Okay, fine. That's great. 
I should move on. Okay, so while sharing your thoughts about the statement that I showed on my previous slide where I wrote, fear is not equal. Just let me, do you agree with that statement? Do you disagree? Do you strongly agree or strongly disagree with the statement that I shared? So you just share these, you know, pointers uh, about your agreement, disagreement using the chat box that do you agree with that statement or yes, is there any disagreement? Okay, your slide now, is not changed. Your slide is not, uh, you are, we are in the first slide till now. Really? Yeah. Can you, mm. can you see it now? Uh, no, I, we can see only the first slide. Oh, that's, you know, but here I'm changing it. Okay. Fine, let me get back over here. Mm. Now, it stopped sharing, is it so? Yeah, is it, st it has stopped sharing. You, can you please oh. uh, share it again? Okay. Let me try it again. Mm -hmm. It is not taking me there. There is some issue with the sharing option. I think I should continue without sharing yeah. it, else we, yeah. are, we okay. are going to lose a lot of time. So, yeah. yeah. So, what I say, guys, that fear is not uh, everything. Get, um, everyone getting the same thing. Fear is everyone getting what they need in order to be successful. So this is the whole idea of today's talk, where we are going to say that equal is not always fair, and fear is not always equal. So this is the thought that uh, I have here, and you know, many educators in the world uh, second these thoughts, and I have taken it from many eminent professionals, those who are working in the field not only to teach but to educate children as a holistic learner so uh, there are a few more uh, things that i would like to ponder uh, over and i want i request you all also to ponder over i'm really you know sorry that you can't see the ppt so have you ever uh, heard or thought equity and equality are they same thing do you think that we should treat all our students in the same way and how equity is connected to understanding difference so these are thoughts so why am i starting the session with the thoughts because i really want you to think over these things because when we think about something it goes deeper in our mind because today's topic is about differentiated instruction so you need to relate well about it that what is the background of differentiated instruction mr asad there is uh, i was thinking that uh, if i'll not share you know can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. So uh, is Menti uh, visible to you now? Um, can you see it? No. Um, let me check. I have not. Fine. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can see. Yeah, yeah. You can see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm also sharing it again. So, can you see it now? Is it visible? Yeah, I can see it now. Yeah, it is visible. Yeah. So these are, you know, different thoughts that I have gathered from you all, and yes, so level of understanding, age, knowledge base. So these are all building blocks of differentiation. Differentiation is very vast and very easy if we implement it with an understanding. So yeah, that's great. I can see, you know, your thoughts. I'm again stop sharing and I'm trying to share my PPT again because it is, you know, I have put in a lot of effort, so it should be vis visible. <laughs> uh, let me check. Okay, great. Allow. Can you see it now? Yeah. Uh, what can you see right now on the screen? Can you please tell me? A lot of hands. Yes, that's great. I'm doing it back uh, just uh, just for checking. Can you see it now? Read, yeah, think, yeah. and reflect. That's great. That means that's going on well. So, uh, guys, read, think, and reflect. Use your chat box as much as you can today because we all are not passive learners, rather active listeners and, you know, change makers. So think about it. Uh, equity and equality 
are these you know same terminology same word same philosophy shouldn't i treat have have this thought ever crossed in your mind that shouldn't i treat all my student in the same way and how is equity connected to understanding difference then uh to give you a little idea if you can see you know this side of the picture which says equality the teacher think that i am giving equal opportunities i am giving equal support and the learner should go but if you see learners are at different level but when we talk about equity it also promotes fairness but regardless of equality which promotes fairness it is it is it is not about needs but equity is all about needs of the learner because we should accept it and we have always seen that the learners in our classroom are different they have different needs they have different readiness level different learning profile so yes when everything is different how can equal opportunities will promote you know the kind of growth that we expect from them so yes we need to shift our focus from equal equality to equity the basic understanding and yes now consider these plants okay so one is the cactus and another one is another sapling but you know both are very different both belong to this species flora but both are different needs are different what if if i'll keep on and uh, you know adding water to both the plants and giving them uh, you know equal amount of sunlight supplying those fertilizer as micro and macro nutrients but at the end of the day what will happen i need to realize that what does this cactus needs to grow and this sapling need to grow so uh, assume that these are your students you know students have very different needs and what we end up we end up promoting equality giving them equal opportunities but have we ever thought about their needs i really say most of us don't do that okay now think about the olden days apprenticeship when people are hand holded to reach to learn a skill so same thing think that your teaching is apprenticeship where you are hand holding a child to reach where we are expecting them to reach say benchmarks your learning intentions or say something to do with their life so this kind of learning this kind of teaching requires a hell lot of robust planning right we need to plan like anything there should be many heads which are planning you know so your colleagues your parents your pedagogical leader all need to do co planning and the kind of goals which you are setting for students should be equitable i say share equal goals but back them up by equitable goals and then analyzing data right so data is something which we which we analyze at the you know at the end of the term or probably uh, at the end of you know a month to report parents but usually the data when it is you know related to assessment when it is related to teaching and learning practices it requires moment by moment and day by day observation and who can do that yes we as teachers and educators can do that okay then modeling is important please make sure that your language is inclusive in the classroom the world is facing a lot because of personal differences because of cultural differences so we need to be inclusive wherever you are whatever is the curriculum try to bring an in inclusion in your paid practices so just a very good example is given over there that replace the word parents with families or caregivers and you know avoid the genders nouns like you know guys boys or girls because that creates stereotype better to use the word learner fine what are the five big ideas that i can give you during distance learning because we all are doing remote learning by all possible ways we are trying to you know reach our learners and it is very important to understand what to do in this you know new normal it is very very important what can we do what can we do to make learning happen so first thing first advice that i usually give my teachers also develop empathy in yourself consider the mindset of the learner and mindset of your parents and 
just try to understand that whatever we used to deliver in the classroom it's practically impossible we are trying to replicate we are trying to substitute but there is no substitute of physical school okay that touch that you know the kind of uh, relationships we have with our parents there is no substitution for that so right now we are doing crisis teaching so understand understand and keep the main goal as promoting well-being and trying to bridge the learning gap which is resulting due to this pandemic situation so create content with access in mind for example usually in our classroom what do we do we use a blackboard or a whiteboard or videos but try to make content in you know various ways include videos include podcasts include written instructions have you know some of your own videos so that it is accessible to all varieties of learner focus toward reaching each and every learner towards in your class so uh, when i talk about you know the learning gap there are learning gaps and learning disabilities right learning disabilities is a very different concept usually you know the trained as seen specialists deal with them but as a teacher we can bridge the learning gap always second big idea i should talk about is apply udl principle i'll uh, just uh, brief udl about uh, about udl it's about universal design of learning principle it is a design which promote you know accessibility of uh, the content to each and every learner so increase access to content that i said in my last slide by moving beyond traditional form of engagement what is the traditional form of eng engagement teacher being a, you know uh, um, uh, only one source of you know information doing a monologue student are sitting in the classroom and you know gaining all the instruction as the passive listener so this type of traditional approach has to be stop and develop content that can be acted on in various ways right now there are various opportunities provided by unesco provided by google provided by microsoft that there is a lot of content available so the first difficulty for a teacher is to choose an appropriate content if your content is good you are halfway done so a teacher who is unable to plan is planning to fail consider students equitable access to devices and the internet i know i i know about you know the technical problem in the field when we are trying to connect with uh, parents so what we are doing we have a unified platform as google classroom where we have opted for synchronous teaching and learning but we are also promoting asynchronous teaching and learning and what we are doing we are also using whatsapp you know uh, to reach people to reach parent and we are allowing them to share what students are learning at home because we are also evidencing learning because evidencing learning is again a first step towards differentiated instruction think through alternative option to assist students and family in gaining internet and computer access so google classroom can, is accessible through mobile so yeah it is you know very device friendly but even if that is not working don't stop you can prepare some packets and you can email it to them and tell them that they can work and send it across have some of your recorded videos so it's like you know reaching to their home when nothing is helping them out so our role has actually broadened up now consider the so i started from this and this again came over here consider the socio emotional well being of students and i would add on here of all the stakeholders keep your expectations reasonable don't try to cover up everything you know because it is really difficult when moving to online or distance learning the social and emotional well being of students should be at the highest priority so what should be your highest priority of all sort of instructions all sort of promo, uh, you know planning that you are promoting well being because we are the one who used to say that screen time has to be minimized and now we are the one who is using screen extensively so try to find ways try to find ways to balance this aspect and yes it is doable the only thing is you need to little bit little bit work on your roster your timetable and your um, curriculum planning has to be done in a way that you are doing um, you are just curb uh, you are curbing the learning gaps and you're also concerned about the well being of students 
be creative and ha have fun leverage open resources i just shared that there are platforms which are promoting open resources i may be you know approaching mr asad to share those resources which we have with us which we have been using as a school we are not using any of the paid resources so everything is being done by the generous people who have shared resources for free most of the biggest platform are offering free services so you know leverage those resources engage a student if your students are engaged they are learning otherwise you will end up making noise they are not going to learn so develop that kind of engagement and that comes through intrinsic motivation when they feel happy about their learning you know so they learn so create that environment during your classrooms now let's come to the topic of differentiation so i have actually you know built the ground so that you can adapt so when we talk about differentiation we are basically catering to the need of each and every learners because our learners have very diverse need you know so we are recognizing those needs by recognizing the individuality of learners right and then we are giving them enough support it's about equity and respect in the learning process you know it doesn't concern planning individualized lessons i'm not telling you if you have 30 35 students to plan 35 lessons i'm trying to say that understand the need of each and every learner and then cater to their need and i'm going to tell you how you're going to do it actually i want you to quickly ponder over this question what are you already doing to differentiate instruction in your classroom when i say differentiation it's all about responsive teaching so what you're doing to respond to the needs of the learner how you're doing it and especially in this pandemic situation use a chat box and share your thoughts mr asad am i audible well mr sain can you hear me i can hear you we can hear yes. you yes so are they sharing anything in the chat box uh, whenever anything come i will definitely share yeah. thank you so much so i'm not going to ask again you can share it with me because okay. for me it's only slide neither i can see you yeah. nor i can see the uh, chats so okay. please do that for me so what sure. are you already doing to differentiate instructions in your classroom please share your thoughts about it with me and yes i'm going to definitely tell you what am i going in our classrooms consider students are different we keep on saying students are different there is multiple intelligence and howard garner came up with a theory and the basic differences are they have different prior knowledge remember we are teaching generation z right they are the digital transformers we are the digital natives so they have very different prior knowledge they have very different exposure a little uh, learner of one of my class was discuss discussing about you know the life cycle of the plant and because i'm not a biology student i'm a math science student and he used the word cotyledon i said what what did you say so this level of knowledge from where did they get it because they have access to all the devices they read stories on the digital platform so their prior knowledge is very different so don't forget to take the prior knowledge of your learners the personality is different the cultural background is different the um, uh, you know the kind of learner i have seen in bangladesh i haven't seen in india and in india it differ from state to state right and all are brilliant all are wonderful they have different learning preferences which is well defined by howard gardner and as a teacher i have hard time implementing eight multiple intelligence or 12 whatever it is yes it is school readiness here what i have observed that students you know usually take admission little late so readiness level here is different from india india uh, you know uh, learners are being pushed into the classroom at the age of 2.5 here it is little different gender obviously and their interest what do they want to do that is, these are you know the major factor which tell us about the diversity of learners who are ruling in the classroom they are actually our boss this is about the harvard gardner you know theory that learners learn through this learners learn through that they learn through music they learn by touching they learn by you know interpersonal skill or them some are kind of aesthetically smart some are you know social smart some are logical smart but actually it is a web 
I could not relate well with it. And yes, there was a question what to do while planning my lesson. How come I can implement all these things, you know, in that 40 minute class? Although I'm blessed to be a part of curriculum, which allows me to come out, you know, those confined boundaries of covering up the content. So we are a concept driven curriculum. Still, this thought came across in my mind and I can empathize well with you that, OK, she's talking about multiple intelligence again. But yes, there is a solution again. There is one more, you know, a very famous educationist, Robert Sternberg. He is, you know, one of the student of Carol and Tomlinson, the guru of differentiated instruction. He agreed with Howard Gardner. However, you know what he did? He just, you know, bifurcated uh, those many multiple intelligence into three. And the first one is analytical intelligence. So how do we observe this kind of intelligence in our student? For example, if someone is, you know, very linear, school smart, very sequential, very organized, if uh, making, you know, well-defined diagrams, talking about the key parts, but when it comes to creative thinking, this learner will take a back seat. This learner is an analytical learner. When we talk about practical smart, the person is street smart, usually contextual, and more than learning, he or she focuses on uses. So he is, you know, learner, learn by doing things, learn by observing, learn by experimenting. So demonstrating how someone uses, uh, for example, uh, uh, uses magnetism in their own, uh, life or work. Show how could we apply fractions to solve real life problems. So if this is happening, your learner is a practical learner. Now, who are the creative learners? Innovator, outside the box thinker, and what if? It means improver. I, I would like to share one of the example of uh, one of the learner of our school. We have been using, you know, different app and this learner go to the event to, the, you, you know, observe this thing in the class and he immediately jumped to the Play Store and he made a digital booklet and we all were, you know, spellbound to see his kind of understanding and none of his classmates did it. So it's all about, you know, creative thinking. So these three learners are the broad category which you always should keep in mind while planning your instructions and while making any lesson plan so implementing harvard gardner so it seems little hypothetical abstract but yes this is doable and this is what i have been doing for past 10 years so why are we discussing about, you know, differentiation? Why such a, you know, long discussion, a detailed discussion about differentiation? Because it is important for all the plants to grow. Same way, it is important for all the students to grow. So it, you know, ensure equal access to learning content. And it fosters strong conversation between teacher, learner, and content. It relieves the conflict in learning environment. For example, we are, you know, focusing a lot on learning, but at the same time, we can't see those, you know, are they progressing because we are not giving them need-based instruction. We are not giving them need-based content. So there is always a conflict, right? And it fosters independent lifelong learning. You will see from the example, how are we going to make our student independent? Build on student skills, strength and interest. Let me give you an example. For example, I've given you a very, you know, detailed book with diagram about swimming and you have by hearted it. And when I take you to the actual swimming pool, will you be able to swim? No, really not. Because you have knowledge, you haven't developed enduring understanding. And on the top of that, you don't have skills. So when will the skill come? When I'll push you into the swimming pool, I'll handhold you. So take this swimming as your learning. So skills are most important and differentiated learning promotes skills development, right? It increases motivation and participation. Let me tell you one thing. We all have been using rewards, you know, the um, here and there giving stars and, you know, having the learners photos on the wall and this, you have done this, you have done that, but that is all temporary because it leads to certain kind of external rewards and it all talks about extrinsic motivation but differentiation actually develop intrinsic motivation 
it means they don't have you know a desire for achieving a reward for learning rather they develop love of learning and it boosts self confidence when i am able to do something i'll feel more confident i'll feel that i am worthy so self confidence and self worth will be automatically and ultimately developed through differentiation you know uh, think seven to differentiate how how what what all we need to do to differentiate first thing we need to address the student these three things whether they are ready for the instruction so ask those h point questions which will give you an idea that are they ready for uh, the content or they are moving forward or they are moving backward do they need any support and what interests them what are they interested how do they learn better do they learn through videos do they learn through hands on experiences do they learn through working with others you know are they creative are they analytical so those questions which i have just shared in my you know last slide you need to ask them then what is their learning profile you need to ponder over their learning profile as well then what all you can differentiate so what is the part you know uh, what what does uh, what is something that made up a curriculum it is the content right your curriculum content it is a process your teaching and learning and it is the product that is your assessment and there is one more third teacher we call it you know in reggie reggie amelia approach we call learning environment as third teacher right so learning environment matters a lot so we can change all four things keeping our learning outcome same by giving different pathways to learner and by you know taking them where we want them to reach or where they want to reach by bringing a little changes in all these things based on the three things on the other side okay how do we differentiate these four elements so what uh, what is content i have already explained it that what students need to learn your syllabus you know your curriculum benchmarks your lessons or how students will get access to the information right that is there and process what learning engagement you are doing here it is used uh, here uh, the word activity is used but i call it learning engagement because activity is anything drinking water walking anything is activity but when students are engaged for learning so what learning engagement are you doing in order to you know make sense or master the content how are you making the content accessible to student through learning engagement what product after assessing what learning outcome what is the outcome that you have so culminating project basically your summative assessment your exams your standardized testing those can be changed learning environment the way the classroom works and feels in ib i am a part of international baccalaureate none of the students sit in rows and columns the way we used to sit you know and the teacher is standing and all of them sit in group and we keep on changing the group i'll take you to that as well okay some examples more of content that using reading material at varying read readability levels if we give them a book which is you know giving bouncer on their head and they are not able to relate it what is the use of that book so nowadays you know reading material is available at different you know reading level and for this one of the biggest platform that i'm using is newsella and it is you know uh, very very good so use newsella putting text material on tap tape so whatever you are uh, giving as a text try to make it in the form of audio and most of the curriculum are giving this this facilities that now the content are in the form of cds and there are audio tapes also using spelling or vocabulary list at readiness level of students share the vocabulary list with them depending upon their readiness level because there are students who are who are not you know don't have that rich vocabulary and in the content there is such technical vocabulary which 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 you know which hinders the progress presenting ideas through both auditory and visual means which i just said using reading buddies so for example there are there is a learner who struggles when it comes to reading and comprehensions make them sit with a learner who is good at that and you will see the growth meeting with small group to reteach and in the present scenario what you can do you can give them a reading partner 
through you know your zoom breakout rooms whatever you are using so yes it it you know actually enhances or you can share them uh, that okay you two are the reading buddy keep on reading highlighting the key areas and share with each other meeting with small group to reteach an idea or a skill for struggling learners i just said that there are checkpoints in uh, while teaching and learning you need to identify do you need to reteach a concept a topic a lesson and by doing this you are actually meeting those struggling learners those who are not getting things and it it actually don't happen you know what what happen when we end up our curriculum uh, uh, benchmarks or lesson what we what do we ask we ask it okay kids raise your hand who know it well and there are few learners who raise their hand and those are the cream of the class and who are left behind don't you think they also need to learn so reteach the concept from the areas where they are unable to access the content okay this is one thing that we can do product right now we will be discussing about product later in the slide still i can uh, brief you about it so giving student options you know i am going to tell you how we can give options to students and so giving student options using rubric that match and extend students varied skills level so rubric is a tool which has detailed criteria and it is actually you know so well planned that we are catering to the each and every level of the learners and they know how are we assessing them and where they are up to allowing student to work alone if they want to do uh, you know individual work allow them or if they want to work in a group let them do that i am going to tell you why is it good to have the group work and how it can enhance learning encourage students to create their own product as long as the assignment content required elements so it is important that your learning should mirror the real world tell them you know to have their own products if they are you know aspiring to do so don't stop them even though your curriculum is not allowing you to do so but if you allow you will see that whatever they have gathered through a six week lesson or a four week lesson if they're implementing it into the real world that's the best part learning environment making sure that there are places in the room to work quietly without distraction as well as places that invite student collaboration there are students with learning disability for them they can't bear the sound which is being produced by other learners and in that case what happens they become you know distracted learners they are you know unattentive in the class so have some quiet corners in the classroom Uh, where you they can access whatever they want to do if they are feeling distracted so you need to have this kind of culture providing material that reflect a variety of culture and home setting for example if you are teaching a concept don't only confine your concept to bangladesh rather give them opportunities to explore other cultures and try to go from local to global because that is the need of the hour setting a clear guidelines for independent work whenever you are setting up an independent work you need to set up clear guidelines that also i'm going to tell you in the later slides developing routines that allow student to get help when teachers are busy and cannot help them immediately it is very important that you develop a culture of collaboration and cooperation by teaming up people not like okay someone has finished the work so okay go help, help the kids not this culture this is something which you are, which we are doing a crime we are actually taking the time of the learner who can excel more who is actually brilliant during the class learning when the learning is happening give them a space to work collaboratively helping students to understand that some learners need to move around to learn while others do better sitting quietly there are learners who cannot sit who cannot listen to you even for 10 minutes they learn by doing and if you are not helping them to do what they want and how they are programmed they will not learn so have some hands on learning engagement in the classroom not all the time but try most of the time they are able to do how they are programmed to do things they are kinesthetic learner and by creating such a learning environment we are promoting inclusion we are promoting respect and if you are doing that we are good to go now 
I would like to take you, you know, different level of knowledge. So this is a, a normal web, you know, uh, uh, depth of knowledge. So whenever we are planning a lesson, we need to clearly identify our learning intentions. As I said, that there are different type of learners. Uh, when we are seeing, you know, the curriculum these days, they have actually identified the type of learners and the curriculum is catered to the uh, is uh, catering to the need of the learners so while doing your short term planning your lesson plan identify these steps that there will be some opportunities for recall and reproduction what happened most of the teachers reach dok1 and dok2 depth of knowledge they end up doing the recall and reproduction revision basic application of skills in you know in a very familiar setting but a teacher which is aiming towards you know 21st century skill development should move on to strategic thinking and extended thinking so what is dok1 when students are answering close ended questions recall and reproduction whatever you have delivered they are just reproducing that next level little you know advanced level is how did it happen why did it happen but this is all what you have delivered in the classroom they didn't do any research you were the only source of information then you need to think about dok3 strategic thinking when you have demonstrated certain things but you are giving them options for using their voices and you are asking them how can you use it in some other setting then you are going a level up you are asking what is the impact of it what is the relationship between you know uh, for example what is the relationship between addition and subtraction how these four operations are related what would happen if we are going to burn a wood so you are actually extending their thinking so whenever you plan your lesson try to include all sort of dok questions and it actually promotes you know uh, 21st century learning now we are going to uh, mr asad uh, i'm going to switch to the second part so would you like to take some questions i have already shared the link with our viewers if anyone mm -hmm want mm -hmm. uh, they can join us directly to the studio and okay. ask your question or okay. any of you can put your question in the comment box i will pass it to our guest speaker so you okay, are also so welcome yeah, to join the studio directly if anyone okay. is interested yeah i'm again sharing the link just look at the comment box uh you just click on the link and you will be you will join us here okay because my you know um, uh, teachers are able to see it and mm -hmm. they are commenting as well and how is your know, chat is going on are you seeing any responses yeah yeah i'm uh, i see some responses and i'm sharing that with okay. you and here the link is shared anyone okay. any any teacher can join us directly here if the i will see okay. anyone if anyone come i will see and i will take him to the front stage yeah. Okay. Now, uh, can you uh, see my slides also? The moment I'm uh, speaking, is it going on well with my slides? I am right now on differentiation differentiation strategies. Okay. The thing is, okay. Can you please uh, share it yeah. again? Uh, because your slide was not changing. But as, hmm. Yeah. So if you maybe if you go to the another presentation. Yeah. Now I can see another presentation you can hmm. try changing it so before can you go. see it now oh i can see that yeah we can see that okay. now so i think i'll do this yeah, way if i'll do a presentation then it will not be visible i guess so there is some okay. issue with that okay right. so right now now we are going to moving to the second part now i have developed a background of differentiation through my talk i don't know how how far i am successful that's the reason i always tell viewer to share if they are getting it otherwise it is going to be <laughs> almost a waste of time so let's see uh, we are going to discuss about differentiation strategies means taking differentiation into the classroom so yeah someone has uh, uh, joined our studio i am taking her in directly nusrat nusrat okay. if you uh, you can you can talk with us directly. Uh, 
Hello, Nusrat. Can you hear us? You need to unmute yes, your sir, mic. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir, go I can ahead. hear you. Okay, go ahead with your question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> at, at, at first, uh, I want to thank you, Ubed, to take this uh, opportunity that you have invited our honorable head of UAP, ma'am. Uh, I'm here for her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, and actually, uh, I was uh, here especially to look into what are the resources she has in her stack. <laughs> so I wanted to <laughs> explore those because we always look into her and see like how many resources she has till now and when she will take out all of them to in front of us. We are just waiting for that. <laughs> So this is all, uh, what all we are doing so far. Yes, there are some, you know, factors which you will find new because for you, I'm doing it by hand holding. But here I got this opportunity to have one session. So I've tried to concise it and uh, I'm trying to present it. No, so do you have any questions here? Uh, no, ma'am. For the time being, no. <laughs> okay. If you have, please come again and we can have a good discussion. So right now we are discussing about, you know, the flexible grouping. Students uh, are part of many different groups and also work alone. This is something we need to understand. So in class, we need to promote homogeneous grouping. It means the student, those who have same interest based on the task. And we also need to have heterogeneous grouping in which we are having the diverse ability learners working with each other to promote the kind of learning they want to do. Sometimes students select work and sometimes teachers select work. So right, both are, you know, it's a kind of democratic, uh, democratic classroom setup where we are promoting equal opportunities and equity. That's where we have started. So helping them to learn in group, why grouping is important if someone is pondering over it. The most important skill is collaboration and it is one of the sub skill of social skills right so it is very important that our learners know how to work in a group and how to leverage you know um, uh, the assets of those group members they all are you know some are group smart some are kinesthetic learners some some learn by doing so when they learn as a group they actually learn those skills which are naturally not there so learners learn better when they are in a group. This is one thing. This is one of the strategy. Now I'm moving to raft. Raft is being extensively used in the school and all the teachers can relate well. And whatever I'm sharing over here, none of the strategy is a high prep strategy. High prep strategy means which requires a lot of time and which, which is an added on thing. There are high prep strategies also. So we are dealing with the basic level of differentiation. But yes, it is effective too. It gives good results and it promotes learning. It makes the learner happy. So RAF is a strategy. It is basically a writing strategy, but you can use it anywhere. It is universal and it is so handy that you're using role. Students are, you know, picking up different roles. They are setting their audience. For example, I as a student chose the role of reporter. And I'm thinking that my city where I'm living is my audience. And I'm thinking that my format will be a news report, right? Or a video uh, where I'm using, uh, I'm working as a news reporter. And topic is the same which teacher is dealing in the classroom. Another student is make, uh, thinking that I'm an object, right? And an object and thinking that audience is community. So as an object, for example, a broom, you're talking about cleanliness and a student is thinking that I'm a broom and community. He or she is telling that what is my, you know, usability and the format probably an essay and the topic probably cleanliness. So same topic, but students are wearing different hats and thinking about different setting and choosing their own format. That's how we are promoting choices and it makes learning interesting and it gives, you know, student a kind of ownership. Second thing is the menus, right? So when we go in a restaurant, what, what, what do we want? Imagine that you are in a restaurant and, you know, the waiter is giving the food which he wants you to give or, you know, the owner of the restaurant is uh, giving you the food which he wants you to eat. Will you be eating that? No. Imagine that the school is restaurant and your kids are the customer. 
right so we need to give them choices and those choices should be informed choices right now what we discussed we discussed about dok depth of knowledge so prepare a menu where you are catering to all four level of dok for example here in this menu it is about the process of photosynthesis teacher write in the appetizer which everyone has to do that write the chemical equation for photosynthesis this is the basic requirement it talks about recapitalization it talks about reproduction of what has been done in the class then she has given or he has given two three more learning engagement and the teacher is asking a student to select any one so means all three have the same level probably it is going to the dok2 then side dishes the learner has to select at least two uh, in the side dishes see you know the level of knowledge has been in uh, uh, level of knowledge has been leveled up the teacher is asking define respiration and writing compare photosynthesis to respiration higher order thinking skill it is something where we are you know combining comparing contrasting and these requires higher order thinking skills then the third thing the fourth thing which is catering to the learners those who are the high achiever that is dessert create a test to assess the teachers knowledge of photosynthesis whatever has been done in the class create a test for it and you know give us you know some kind of experiment so this is catering to the learner which is the high achiever and we are not telling okay you are done with your work come on go and help your uh, other you know peers that is good but that is good when it is happening in a time when the learner the one who is high achiever is learning the moment he is done it means we are not giving him challenge and we are not catering to his need another you know uh, very easy strategy is uh, we all used to play you know tic tac toe so it is tic tac toe and it is a choice board for example this particular tic tac toe talks about a book report right so we are we are it means we want our student the learning intention is the learner write about the book which he, he or she is reading and usually when we write about the book what do we do we talk about the author we talk about you know the illustrator we talk about publication and then we go to the setting of the book if it is a story fiction non fiction all those things but does it make sense for all the learners so give them opportunities scaffold the learning for example in this uh, nine you know learning engagements nine activities we are asking them to ponder over the book that they are reading but we are not asking them to write away write a book report in a set format and they are actually talking about the book so when they are done with this kind of choice menu next can be the proper format book report but we can always start the learning this way another thing i was you know a lot talking about the intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation there is one thing if a learner is involved in the learning if there is an agreement that yes i need to learn and i need to self regulate myself so yes viewers especially my teachers this is something new for you as well so learning contracts for whatever is the learning intention share it with the learner tell him how would you like to learn you would you like to read would you like to listen to audio and see how he or she is opting ask them why are you opting do you learn better through this and provide them this kind of content how will i share it when you are done with learning what type of you know product will you do will you write a book report or will you be going to do a multiple choice question how will you share it when uh, what you have learned and what is my finish that if this contract is being shared by the learner the most difficult learner and if they are agreeing on certain you know parameters you will see an improvement in learning that is for sure this is a higher level learning contract it is talking about you know uh, for higher classes to demonstrate what i have learned about for example the child is learning about civilization ancient civilization then the teacher is giving him opportunities of format the teacher is asking this will be a why will it be a good way for understanding the concept why to, um, talking about this particular you know format while uh, learning about uh, ancient civilization 
what will be your action plan what you are going to do do you need more videos would you like to uh, have a word with you know some kind of visitor those who live in egypt pro probably if they are learning about egyptian civilization what will be your success criteria how will you say that your whatever you are doing is successful so a lot of pondering is going on and the learning is being owned by the learner rather than we pushing him we are there but we are there not as a teacher rather as a facilitator now i'm going to talk about hinge points hinge points are those areas where you want to stop you want to reflect back like like i said you need to know where your students are where they are going are they moving backward or forward so in the lesson ask them by giving opportunity by just a sign of them yes i'm doing well and no i'm i'm not doing well i'm this so tell tell him or her that what opportunities shall i give you where do i need to relook back so have that kind of you know voice of a student where they can say that ma'am can we do it you know again or sh can you share it again with us and this is an ongoing process you need to implement it not like uh, asking it in a formal manner that okay good to go ask them a questions which give you a signal that actually this thumb up and thumbs down is you know valid enough so this is something which you need to do very smartly another thing is understanding zone we are in a you know virtual setup so have this understanding zone shared with them talk to them that whatever they are learning are they finding it too easy if they are saying yes it is too easy so level up your content and probably they may have different answer and as a differentiated instruction advocate as a differentiated instruction educator you are always planning learning content in varied level so that it can you know cater to the need of those learners those who are aspiring to achieve something neither it should be too hard nor it should be too easy it should be exactly at the appropriate level when i say this it seems little hypothetical that how do we know what is the exact level but you will get to know when you will implement it it requires lot of observation keen observation now when we talk about product in most of the school uh, especially you know uh, the national boards and all it is all about standardized testing right so standardized testing is one of the product and which is you know mostly da data driven product and there is lot more which happens other than in the classroom i'll share one of the example uh, i have done msc chemistry and you know in our college that was mandatory for a Uh, maths background person to look into uh, biology for 6 month and the bio background person used to look into mathematics for 6 month is this fair enough no and they used to cover you know all 3 weeks 3 uh, uh, months um, thing into 2 weeks so that was you know a kind of cc sort of thing i am well aware that probably i can learn about biology because it is more theoretical but what about a person who is stepping into mathematics differentiation integration you know those matrix it is it is really difficult then the teachers used to say whatever will happen in those 3 hours is the product of who you are and what you are doing i don't believe it as an educator there is lot more which assessment other than assessment we can observe so assessment if you are relying on assessment it is mandatory requirement we can't help it some you know some government some school still promoting standardized assessment i'm not against it yes it is good it is one of the way but it is not the only way so help them to use different product during your formative assessments right or during their ongoing learning even though your curriculum doesn't allow instead of traditional assessment you can write reports they can make videos they can make projects they can make presentation they can even get into visual arts right the songs dances skits or visual art presentation so there is lot more to do even even you are you know highly packed by the government or the school or the system where you are working in so if you are promoting you know this kind of choices so this is again something which is which is i can't say that it is mandatory but other thing you can do you know the content or the process 
or the learning environment that you can do anywhere even though you are a government school teacher or you are a english medium school which is following standardized testing for product yes you need to be a little mindful and you need to think about how are you promoting it in your setting what all we can do when it comes to product there are many ways they can make advertisement they can make collage they can give a lecture to your to their juniors you can organize a debate they can write poetry they can make a diorama they can make the checklist for example your learners are learning about writing process how what what is the best way to assess them if they are devising a checklist for themselves that while writing i'm going to see that i'm going to look into my vocabulary i'm going to look into my sentence construction so they can do all these things to foster their learning so here we are talking about assessment for learning not assessment of learning we are talking about assessment as learning so a teacher and students are moving to and fro to understand and to learn better i would like to say a quote here that reform we are talking about reform reimagination changes paradigm shift and it will happen from within not without if you are taking differentiation as a burden we are not going to change it if you are actually embracing as a change and change for good it will work wonder definitely because how we are relying on certain thing which is you know factory based model of learning industrial model of learning but this is done by educators those who actually wanted our learners to learn better so if we are following some of the research based technologies research based you know pedagogies so it it actually makes a difference whatever i i spoke about this is done by a fabulous lady Caroline Tomlinson and I have been you know personally trained by Caroline Coyle both of them are wonderful and do have you know uh, a look at their work it is it is fabulous so to sum up what is differentiation i'm going to tell you because i spoke a lot so i'm going to just uh, brief you again what is differentiation a differentiation is something which is student centered highly specific to the need of the learner best practices different approaches three to four different learning engagement for one learning outcome multiple approaches to content process and product a way of thinking and planning and flexible grouping it is very important to clear the myths also and i'm going to tell what differentiation is not it is not one thing there are no you know a plan which i can give you okay one fine day you will become a differentiated instructor it's all about your experiences it is not a program it is not a goal it is not about asking hard questions sometimes and asking easy question to others it is not about planning 35 different lesson plan for 35 learners on the classroom it is not about a chaotic classroom i should rather say it is an organized chaos it is not about just homogeneous grouping when i say homogeneous grouping say you have an assembly presentation who will you select all the good speakers mostly it happens yeah at times we we become little mindful and we sit back and give opportunities to learners who, who are you know little introvert and all but homogeneous grouping happen in all the school but i said believe me if you will do heterogeneous grouping if you will are mixing up the varied level student it adds value to the life of learners because if you are i don't know you're familiar with this there's a theory by zygotsky and he talks about zone of proximal development for example i'm here i'm here standing with my learning if i want to reach here the final outcome i will reach there if i'm working with an with a, with an adult or i'm working with my friend a peer right so grouping is that important and it actually leads to better performance why because learners need feedback and we give feedback as a dictator but their peers give you know honest feedback and you need to again develop that culture where feedback is not negative rather specific goal center so it is all you need to do as a teacher and that will be transferred into your class and that's how you're going to change your learning environment so again we'll get back to what is fair is not always equal right for example you are giving chocolates to all the learners 
but they are not liking it. Why? Because you have given same flavor to everyone. They need different flavors. They have different likes. So think your content is chocolate and you need to deliver in it in a way where it is making sense to the learners of your class. So be mindful about the learners of your classroom. And same thing you're going to do during your online classes also because it has become now more difficult. So different differentiation, what does differentiation do? Differentiation get us away from one size fits all approach. Can you fit a shoe in everybody's you know, foot? No, not possible. We all have different sizes. In the same way, how come we are fitting same curriculum, same instruction in everybody's mind? It doesn't fit, right? So we need to, you know, bounce back on, again, all those which I have shared. We need to be mindful. It takes time. It's a step-by-step -step process. But if you're taking the thought, world is there to help you out. There are many books. Internet is flooding with all good resources. At least give it a try. Another thing, I would like to end by this. Having a growth mindset is very important. If you have a growth mindset, see, the growth will be more. You're going to learn more. You're going to do more. If you have a fixed mindset, I'll tell you one of the strategy. That was a funny thing which I have done as a teacher for years. Like when I was in a full fledged classroom. Right now, I'm not in the classroom. I'm more with teachers being a pedagogical leader. I get some opportunities to interact with the kids, but more with the teachers. And this is something which I had on my door as well. So I related with too much. You know, when we say things, I give up. I can't do it. I made mistakes. Our mind get conditioned that way or when i say i'm good enough i'm better than others so neither think too positive nor think too negative change your statements change your mindset and be ready to you know adapt changes and embrace changes and be ready to grow have growth mindset thank you so much and i have used different resources what all i have I gathered from, you know, my Pandora box. I'm a big fan of differentiation. So, yes, there are resources. Thank you so much, Mr. Asad. I'm done with my presentation. I'm unable to hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, okay, sorry. So thank you very much, Asna, for your beautiful, wonderful presentation. I'm sure it will be very, very helpful for the teachers who are viewing it. And now it is, uh, the floor is open for the uh, viewers. Anyone uh, can join us directly in the studio and ask you question, or they can comment on what they have watched so far. And also they can put your, their question in the comment box. So we welcome uh, questions, comments, and direct participation from all the viewers. Viewer, it's your time. Please ask whatever you have in your mind. It is important to ask. Yeah. It was great, ma'am. Okay. If you have any questions, please do yeah. ask us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think and you can. You are also welcome to join the studio directly. Mm, so, uh, there is a question from Raj Choudhury. Can you see the question? Asnaha, yeah. Miss yes, Asnaha. I can see. Uh, uh, okay. So, uh, Rizwan, a good question, although a little irrelevant to our topic of today. Still, I'm ready to answer. It's all about leadership, right? So, when we talk about leaders in a traditional setup, we, we see, you know, a monarch is sitting and he is doing a kind of dictatorship. But when we talk about leadership in the classroom, 
leadership in a school. So each and every individual is a leader because we are promoting voice choice and ownership. We are promoting students agency. We are promoting teachers agency and we consider each and every opinion, every each and every opinion count. How do we promote leadership in teachers? There is no fixed plan. There are fixed, you know, learning outcomes, but you people are free to make changes, right? You're free to make changes and those changes come into scene when you see, you know, the, the students are not response, uh, are not responding back to you. So you're free to have those changes. When it comes to a leadership, uh, for example, I as a pedagogical leader, there is a lot of flexibility what I can do. So there's no micromanagement, I can say. Yes, there is a lot of, you know, freedom. So I hope I'm able to answer your question, Rizwan. May I? May I add on? Yeah, uh, you, you, we have another question. How to implement our FT Raft strategy? strategy. Raft OK, strategy. for example, Raft, I said it is basically a writing strategy. But you know, we belong to a kind of countries where we believe in making changes using our creativity. So for example, you're teaching mathematics, Mahbubha, OK? You're talking about fractions, fine? And your students are taking up the role of fractions they're choosing audience as a kitchen right you you they're thinking that all of their audience in the kitchen probably their family members and they're using the format as you know a pizza maker and they're explaining it okay and the topic is fraction and another student is you know using fractions to as a scientist probably and he is explaining uh, several things by giving real life examples. So students are wearing different hats and they're working on the same topics, but with different choices, different choices of format, different choices of product, and they're wearing different hats. Uh, we, have, we have got someone uh, oh. directly join our studio. So would you please That's introduce it. yourself? Would you please introduce yourself? Assalamu alaikum. So can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we can well. hear you. OK, thank you so much uh, for this session. It was outstanding. Uh, I couldn't like watch in the very first time, but uh, first uh, like a few minutes, but I go and join later. Anyway, so uh, you you shared, uh, ma'am, I'd like to ask you a question. Would you uh, please introduce yeah, sure, yourself sure. first? Would you please Fine. introduce so, yourself? I'm Nazmul Nabil, one of the educators from Silet. And I'm doing uh, like, as a, I, am, I am an instructor of IELTS currently. So that's all. Okay. Um, so, hard hard English read. Read. so uh, I should think about every I should be dotted and every T should be crossed <laughs> because I'm talking to an English instructor. Is it so? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, okay. um, my question is like you have uh, you you were you were saying asking about sorry you were talking about learner style. So in the classroom, how may we detect or how may we find the learner type so easily? Uh, to understand themselves. Very I, good question. Such a meaningful so question that you have can asked. You Thank you so much for this, this question. How, how to detect the that, learner's time? Yes. Yes. So you, are, you need not to be a detective. Probably you need to wear a hat of a scientist. And it comes through observation. There are learners who are, you know, sitting in your classroom. You're playing a video, but rather they are looking at your face. They are not concentrating on, on, your, on the video. So instead of having the focus on detecting the learner's child, support them by these three learner's child, you know, giving them some hands-on learning engagement. So plan your lesson in a way where you are giving your content in multiple ways, right? Through videos, through hands-on experiences, through auditory input, and through peer-to-peer -peer learning. So working, uh, uh, making them work in the group, giving them opportunities to learn through audiovisual. So these are the different opportunities which you're giving rather than your focus. OK, how can I segregate and compartmentalize learner in the, my class of okay, auditory learner, kinesthetic learner, uh, interpersonal learner. So this is not the main focus of differentiation. The main focus of differentiation is to make your content more holistic and catering to the need of all the learners. So it is based on universal design of learning where the major intention is teaching each learner. I hope uh, I'm able to answer the question. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
Nabil, uh, you need to thank unmute yourself. Thank you so much, yourself. Nabil. Beautiful question. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I got thank my answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nabil. Thank you very much for joining our studio directly. Thank you. Um, is there anyone you have? If you have any question, uh, you can join us directly, or you can ask your question in the comment box. If you don't have any question, any more questions, so we'll wrap up the program very soon. Uh, so, no, I said I don't think anyone is waiting to ask or any yes, yes. question. So, I don't, uh, um, yeah, I can also think how can we manage a big class while the time limit is yes, okay. Fine, okay. Ishtiaq Hussain Munshi has asked a fabulous question. I would like to answer this How can we manage a big class while the time is limited? Such a relevant question. Uh, by Mr. Ishtia. So when we are talking about, you know, you have 45 minutes, that 45 minutes is our fate. We have 45 minutes and usually the concentration span is also 45 minutes. So what do you want to do with that 45 minute? Would you like to do a monologue or would you like to engage your class? So differentiation is not about managing a class, you know, having varied things. It's about managing the class in a smart way by giving them various opportunities to learn in that 45 minutes no one is telling you to implement all divide your learning into chunks use the strategies mindfully for example you are using a choice menu your all learners are not going to use all nine they are going to choose it vertically and horizontally so it means you are giving them opportunities by use utilizing that 45 minutes so it is there is no harm it is one of the effective way to use it and the more you use it more familiar it will be so instead of me talking and explaining try to implement it and probably the next time you can share how 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 well it was so this is something which i said but then when you will say it it i will be I, it would be more you know impactful thank you so much all right so thank you very much uh viewers i think you have enjoyed the program all through and you have asked very very valuable question and i think you have got your answer from uh, asna hamis so again uh, asna farhin thank you very much for joining our program and sharing your good practice which is differentiated learning it is very interesting and i think uh, it it will be it will very helpful for the teachers and it, if someone implement that in the real classroom situation definitely there will be a lot of positive outcome in the learning so thank you very much it was very nice discussion and uh, thank you very much again and we wish to see you again in any of our program maybe with a different topic and um, I don't know whether you visit Silet sometimes. So if you visit, I want to visit. I want to visit. I'll surely your... come and visit. All right. Let yeah. the condition so... get normal. Thank you so much. Now I should yeah. thank you because you are the one who have created, you know, this kind of ecosystem where we, as you know, like-minded people share. It is it is a complete process of give and take. Today, it, I could see, you know, I have taken a few uh, good points from the viewers. The way they have asked questions, it added value to me that I know the answer of those questions. So it was fabulous. I thoroughly enjoyed and I couldn't make it out that the, it is one and a half hour. So we have been talking for one and a half hour. And yeah. thank you so much. And all of you had been too patient to listen to me on such a, you know, it is it is a dry topic, I know, but I picked it up because I want to bring this change, especially for the developing countries like India and Bangladesh. We really need right. to look into our educational system. And this is just one step, which is harmless. Do implement it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Sayan and, you know, UK Bangladesh Educational Trust. I'm wishing you all the best and we'll see you again for sure. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you very much. So viewers, this is the whole objective of this program to create a platform where the teachers uh, like Asnaha Farheen or many other teachers who have good practice to share will come to this platform and share and other teachers who want to take them from learn them from they can learn. So this is the platform absolutely for it is a knowledge sharing platform. So I welcome all of you. Uh, if you have, if you want to share your good practice, you can join us in this kind of program. I have already shared my email address and mobile number in our Facebook page, or you can also contact us through our webpage. 
uh, bdorg uh, and join us in this kind of program. Uh, so thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so thank much. Assalamu alaikum. Take care. Stay so, safe. Stay blessed. Thank you. Thank you.